Uh, sir, we are live now. Please start. Okay. Uh, good evening, friends. So, welcome to NPTEL talk on automotive frame structure design. Uh, so, a brief introduction on myself. I am Anurag Kandul. I am a manager in uh, TBS Motor Company and I lead uh, frame structure design and vehicle layout. Uh, so, at the outset, I would like to thank NPTEL uh, for this talk show. So without any further ado, I'll share my, let me share my screen and we'll go about the presentation. Hope the screen is available. Uh, yes, so a brief introduction on me, uh, my educational background. I have done my master's in uh, University of Warwick, UK, and I have some uh, patents, around 15 patents, mostly in the field of automotive frame design, uh, out of which I think three are uh, granted patents. Then let's get into the topic. So today's topic is on automotive frame structure design. Just a second. Yeah. So frame structure design is a vast topic. It contains design analysis, manufacturing, quality, uh, cost effectiveness. So I will try to touch upon most of the topics so that people having different interests are entertained as much as I can do. So the topic will be mostly both generic and specific and time to time. And my prime focus will be on design parameters. And going forward, I will touch upon some of the design consideration in frame design for future requirements such as for EV. And I also touch upon some career scopes specific to frame structure design. If you read frame structure design, what are the career scopes? A brief overview on the uh, tubular segment. Uh, for the year 2019-20, uh, we developed around or manufactured around 21 million units of two wheelers. So it's a very vast number. So along with that, the challenges of mass productions are also there, which I will, to some level, I'll try to touch upon. Next, uh, what you see on the screen is a frame structure of uh, two different uh, requirement or two different elements. One is for the building and one is for a car. So Frame is like a skeleton or the core over which the actual building or the vehicle assembly starts. It provides the basic support for everything inside and outside. In most cases, it also defines the overall outer shape and mostly in a case of a building, as you can see, the uh, outer shape is more or less is defined by the frame. Going forward, uh, what is a two-wheeler frame? So frame is a fabricator structure uh, which supports most of the vehicle system components directly and indirectly. So even if some part which is not mounted directly to a frame, it is uh, mounted, the part on which it is mounted, it will be taking support from the frame. What you see in the picture is uh, uh, TBS Apache RR310. And you can see there is a front frame colored red or painted red. And there is a rear frame uh, onto which seat is mounted and some other electrical components are so there, footrests are mounted. So it carries most of the parts. So before going to the next slide, I would ask the audience to think about what are the different tasks a frame has to do. Apart from anyway, the obvious thing is it carry parts. But just take a pause and think about yourself. Then I'll try to explain. So going forward, uh, obviously frame carries parts, then it maintains relative position and motion of vehicle components. When we say position, it, it ensures rider position, it ensures engine position, it ensures uh, also drive geometry. And when we say motion of components, uh, it ensures swing arm motion, swing arm articulation, the steering column, which is in the front, uh, through which 
the bottom lower bracket and suspension also rotates so it has to maintain a specified geometry and it ensures those positions and motions apart from this it absorbs load uh, during uh, vehicle maneuverability such as turning or panic braking or acceleration or riding over a uh, uneven surface a large amount of load transfers through the suspension to the frame even and there are reactions like that when you uh, roll your vehicle throttle uh, there will be a reaction in the chain those kind of component reactions also has to go through the frame uh, a heavy engine when it goes through bumps it has a inertia the bracket which holds the frame bracket which holds the engine also takes that kind of component reactions then one of the key parameter or key task what frame does is stiffness it provides stiffness so it has to do all of the above carry load and maintain position and motion while provides a certain level of stiffness not more not less it is like a skeleton of an animal without a skeleton uh, animal or uh, muscles are just a lump of meat it it needs the rigidity of the of the frame to do the work then it also um, helps to um, maintain some of the handling characteristics uh, we will see in these parameters in detail how frame helps in uh, uh, maintaining handling characteristics uh, along with this uh, it also helps protect uh, sensitive internal components um, along with the panel uh, frame also helps components during collision parts such as ecu fuel tank fuel line brake lines injectors they are very sensitive to dust and collision so frame helps to protect those internal and critical components then uh, apart from the above functions frame can be designed to fulfill multiple other roles within the vehicle so i will list out few of the example uh, designers uh, every day finding new ways to use uh, frame in different different purposes so the first image what you see uh, is a husqvarna frame uh, is a motocross vehicle uh, where the rear frame is being used as a fuel tank it is hollow from inside and it is made out of carbon fiber reinforced plastic then what you see the next collage of image is from a vehicle called uh, red Uh, Alta Motors Red Shift. Uh, it's an EV vehicle where, if you see the last image, there are pipes. These are aluminium pipes. These are fabricated into the frame structure itself, and they carry the uh, or uses as a cooling system, and they use the heat dissipating or higher heat dissipating properties of aluminium. This frame is made out of forged uh, aluminium, and the tubes are fabricated into that. and the carries the uh, coolant into it so one of the things to take care obviously when coolant goes through that it may heat up so it should not come into contact of the customer they they would have taken care of that so frame helps in multiple ways going forward um, frame also helps is a part of a style element uh, it is been designed based on a target customer most of the time customer values appearance as much as performance so the frame a ktm frame what you see the telis frame actually showcases strength and ruggedness then the second example is from honda cvr 600 where frame acts as a air duct or is a part of a air intake system so it uses a intake design called ram air intake it uses the dynamic air pressure created by the vehicle forward motion to increase the static air pressure into the intake so what you see in the middle image it creates a pathway there is opening in the front uh, here and it creates a pathway through this so it takes the air uh, the running vehicle running air into the intake system this is only few examples uh, frame also uh, being used for crash structures mostly in, in four wheeler uh, what you see here is um, a crash structure or front Uh, bumper beam which takes the frontal crash load and what is a crash structure it is a sacrificial part which absorbs the crash energy by sacrificing its own shape and form uh, crash structure has two purposes uh, protect the integrity in case of a high speed crash 
or minimize the cost of repair in case of a load speed collision. Then there are two principles which are being used in crash structure design. First in which structure is deformed to absorb the crash energy. In the second principle, it aims to distribute the crash energy through the main structure. So what you see in the second image uh, during the frontal collision, uh, the load is being transferred through load paths or through structures, structural elements into the bulk of the rear chassis. I'll show you a video how, how the frame elements deform itself and make sure that the total crash energy is transferred um, or absorbed. What you could see is the frontal element uh, totally uh, deformed and it absorbs all the load. Even though there is slight deflection in the rear structure, but it did not got damaged. So uh, apart from the crash structure, frame is also being used as a electrical ground to avoid surge, mostly in, both in EV and IC engines. So now um, these are the ways how frame can be used, but how do we start a design? What, how, how it caters to the customer requirement and how it gets aligned to the business plan of the uh, company. I'll go through briefly through that. So uh, what happens is uh, everything starts with a product planning. Every company mostly they have a business planning team, team which studies the market and find a gap in the market uh, for a specific segment of customer and a specific need. And they also identified uh, how would be the yearly volume for, for those kind of customer for a, mostly for a vehicle, what I'm saying here. Then after the product planning is done, then um, the customer voice is captured. People go through, uh, even we as designers also go to tours and we talk directly to the customers. We, we capture the customer requirement. Mostly customer voices are not in the technical term. Obviously, they might say we want a full face helmet in the scooter. We want a good mileage. We want a good looks, uh, things like that. Then we drill down those requirements, uh, customer voices into specific requirements uh, for a segment. And, and we further takes input from the market study from market experts who study the customer overall market. Then the last level is we convert all those uh, top requirement into product specification. Uh, these are the specification which has to be fulfilled to meet the final requirement. So when we do that, we also add, just a second. We also add safety and regulatory requirements like uh, onboard diagnosis, uh, all time headlamp on safety requirements, uh, internal and external safety requirements also there. ABS is now now uh, for high CC vehicles is beyond 150 CC. There is a ABS requirement, so all those requirements are added. Then uh, those specific external requirement means the customer requirements are converted into design specifications. These design specifications are fed into the final or concept design. Taking it forward. So when we take these design specifications, we make a concept design and try to capture as much as uh, customer requirement through the design specifications. Going forward, I will try to explain how design specifications and um, are related to customer requirements. Uh, based on the arrived design specification, concept design of the frame is made uh, to accommodate all these designs. Then Concept design and analysis design, what you see, there are four stages here, concept design, analysis, proto development and testing. So uh, you can consider the first two as a set. These are kind of a virtual uh, analogy of physical vehicle development and testing. So the phase goes such a way from concept design, uh, the concept CAD models are given to analysis. Then it gives a insight to the structural behavior and gives 
we get feedback where and all a component of frame may be failing. We update the design and based on design, we release drawing for proto development. Then once the vehicle, a proto vehicle is made, we do testing and both proto development and testing gives feedback to concept design again. So there is a manufacturing feedback, uh, even though it's not a um, full face tool or hard tool, we get feedback from proto development also. And testing also gives feedback. Uh, these testings are mostly, uh, we try to be relevant to the customer user patterns. There are multiple forms of testing. Going forward, those uh, based on the product planning phase, as discussed above, there are four key design parameters for frame to achieve vehicle level uh, requirements for the customer. So the key parameters are, or the key specifications are design space, structural stiffness, strength, and weight and cost. So design phase is something related to overall vehicle geometry, handling, and the space, and how, how do we distribute the load inside. Uh, in the further slide, I will uh, explain them in more detail. Um, specifically, if we consider uh, weight and cost also, how do we achieve the product specification uh, in a way which manufacturing route being taken? Such a way a one part can be manufactured through both forging and casting. They would have a different impact on the cost and weight altogether. Even though the final shape will be same final output from the part would be same. So there is an impact on cost and weight also. So based on this four specification, what we see is material and shape are the key elements. And down the line, what material we, as a designer we choose and what is the shape we choose has an impact on manufacturing process also. Next. So we will see in detail uh, what is design space. So frame helps to define vehicle geometry in vehicle space. Vehicle geometry responsible for vehicle handling characteristics. So, so these parameters, uh, if they are, which are being controlled by the frame, if they are not controlled properly, they can lead to undesired conditions such as weave, wobble, capsize. And these are some dynamic conditions which may happen in, during running. So here also I will show you one and small video. Here's a BMW to show the there is no audio here. Um, what you see is wobble. Uh, mostly the front uh, wheel was involved in that. It can it can happen to any normal motorcycle. Um, this is driven by the geometry, but need not to worry if you uh, in a normal riding condition. If you keep your hands on the handlebar, it should not happen. So what it says is obviously you should not drive with the hands off. Just like the, wobble. the next phenomena is it's called wobble, where both front and rear wheels are involved. Uh, it goes side to side. It can can also be very rigorous in very higher speeds. Here you see the rider is trying very hard to control. He's trying to duck down. Uh, what he's doing is he's trying to bring his CG down. In some way, he is trying to control the motion. Just a second. Yeah. So those uh, phenomena or those handling characteristics, what we saw, is the output of uh, this vehicle geometry. So what you see in the first image is uh, vehicle frontal geometry. Uh, it involves parameters such as uh, caster angle, front ground trail. Then wheelbase, even CG point is one of the parameter in vehicle geometry. So typical targets for caster is like 24 to 27. Caster along with the trail has a uh, impact of straight line stability. So what happens is uh, increased caster along with the increased trail actually improve the straight line stability. It, it, in, it creates a tire slip force which tries to bring the wheel back to straight line. However, increase in the caster angle uh, reduces the cornering capability. So for example, a, a street bike, which is supposed to be uh, in a crowded uh, city environment to be used, they would have a caster angle towards 24 degrees. But a cruiser, which is designed mostly for highway cruising would have 
uh, in the range of 27 degrees and some customized vehicles even higher caster angles being used so same way even um, wheel base has an impact so any increase in wheel base actually reduces the stiffness of the frame because as you see it, it increases the span of and frame is like a beam a simply supported beam obviously the uh, vertical lateral and to some level torsional stiffness are also affected by the wheel base increase it also what happens is a increase in wheel base also reduces the turning capability or um, capability to take a turn in a narrow road then what it helps in load transfer okay so we will see in detail on to that then um, second image is anti squat uh, geometry so what what uh, simply what is happening is when a motorcycle accelerates the load is transferred to the rear and increases the weight or load on the rear suspension so obviously the rear suspension um, compresses and the vehicle actually squats but there is geometry which helps to take care of this but uh, we first understand need to understand what happens if it squats so in a corner uh, after taking a corner let's say you try to accelerate and there is a heavy squat in the vehicle so it may compress the uh, suspension more and the uh, transfer of weight also may lead to wheelie so means the lifting of the front wheel it may not have a uh, balance to come out of it come out from the corner and it may not have the trajectory what is required this parameter mostly uh, also helps in or mostly considered in racing also apart from this uh, the third image what you see is a rider geometry frame also helps to uh, maintain the rider geometry uh, what you see there are three points one is rider edge point then there is a foot uh, pack point on the frame itself and there is a handle uh, point mostly it is controlled by handle but even uh, frame has a impact because handle is directly mounted on to the frame going forward so those all these points what you see here actually creates the hard points for the frame so two points here then the swing arm point and the suspension point and the ergonomic points are taken as the hard points i try to put it in this image so these points creates the hard points of the frame geometry and these creates the basic layout of the frame so apart from that frame also helps to uh, for weight distribution weight distribution also a key parameter for handling so where do we put the engine that being the heaviest part or where do we put the battery in a ev vehicle has a larger impact and frame uh, has to do a role to make sure that the uh, component heavy components are placed in that way so that weight distribution is maintained along with that uh, frame also has a impact uh, on the style overview on the overall style overview or style uh, thought process so what you see on the left is a uh, uh, sleeker design of the apache ara 310 so to meet the style requirement obviously the rear frame also has to follow that rule while giving support or carrying the load of rider and pillion so mostly Uh, frame also as we discussed earlier frame helps to maintain the overall shape also so uh, before understanding frame stiffness the next parameter is frame stiffness so before understanding that let's clear out some fundamentals so first of all we often relate strength and stiffness as similar properties and strength and stiffness are actually two very different properties and it is important to understand their individual roles in the frame design so as a uh, theoretical definition stiffness is ability to resist deformation under applied load that means a stiffer material will deform less then strength is is ability to ability of a material to withstand load or stress before permanent failure or permanent deformation based on application so what you see on the right is a load deflection curve of two materials uh, I'll pause for a second. Uh, please think about which material is most stiffer. It's, it's 
clearly evident from that, but just give it a thought. So what you see here is obviously the material A is stiffer because for the same uh, exact application of load of 100 Newton, uh, material A deflects only 10 mm, whereas material B deflects more, means it has more deformation. So material A is stiffer, but they have the same strength or it is the design is mostly exaggerated. If this kind of curve might happen in uh, maybe carbon fiber reinforced plastic, definitely not in metal. So it fails just after the peak load, but they have a steam, same strength. What is here? Excuse me. Because they fail or they can carry exactly same load and they fail after 100 Newton of load application. Next is, uh, let us add uh, one more material, the material C. So now if you compare material property of material A and C, they both have same stiffness here because at the application of 100 Newton, uh, both C and A would deflect uh, for the same amount. There is a slight overlap here, but for the material C is a stronger material because it can handle a higher load of 120 Newton. So with the difference between stiffness and strength out of the way, let us understand uh, the importance of stiffness. So why stiffness is important for not just frame or any structure, or any component design. So uh, there are three main reasons or three uh, reasons why stiffness is important, uh, stable deflection, absorption energy, and failure by instability. We will look into detail all three of them. Before that, uh, I'll try to play this video. Anybody who, who have seen or who likes Marvel comics, they know what it is. So it is a helmet and, and there is a motorized uh, front cover or front face seal. So what we saw just saw is actuation of the front face seat. So for proper actuation, there are arms which actually takes the seat up and brings it down. So what it tells is uh, that that arm has to be stiff enough. Otherwise, it may not be able to maintain the alignment what it needs during during its actuation. One more such example is uh, like a like a what can I say? Is a train like like a metro train after loaded where there is a sliding door. After uh, passengers are there, it may reduce, it may bend. Uh, the cabin itself may bend to some level, and the sliders may not actuate because of the stress. So stiffness plays a very important role in assemblies where there is a relative motion between adjacent parts. So for the same reason. Uh, proper running of linear guides uh, for proper running of actuators and for motions in assemblies, uh, stiffness is a important uh, characteristics. So the first thing is uh, stable deflection. So stiffness helps to maintain a stable deflection on on these kind of assemblies. Uh, one more such example is a simple example in day-to-day -day, uh, life is. Consider the paper board used in package. So package must resist the deformation or bulging when being filled or when the content is settled inside and when it is kept in the cell. Unless uh, it happens, it will reduce the space within the cell for other boxes, even though the box is able to carry the load. But if bulges out, it may reduce this uh, space within the cell. It's a very simple example. But still, stiffness plays a much more important role. Actually, the similar kind of designs of uh, composite, the paper board what being used in a cotton box, the composite design, where there is a um, inner, inner zone where it gives a very high stiffness because of forming. So the next characteristics is absorption of energy. So, when a material is strained, it gains uh, elastic strain energy and the amount of energy is the uh, area under the stress strain curve, what you see here. So 
simply as we have plot stress in in vertical and strain on horizontal the the max strain energy will be in half sigma into epsilon so uh, one thing to be remember this is in the elastic region so consider a example for for this kind of application for application involving in a absorption of energy through uh, best stiffness plays a role so consider a crash barrier which has to absorb the kinetic energy of a car moving out of the highway so uh, we are using let's say we are using two materials for the crash barrier if you reduce the young's modulus which is actually the stiffness uh, which governs the stiffness of the material uh, let's say i took another another material where stiffness is reduced so actually what is happening is it reduces the retarding stress on the occupants which is a actually good good phenomena so as you see for the same same uh, energy or for the same amount of energy absorption by reducing stiffness we can absorb by maintaining the area obviously by maintaining the area under the curve we can have a crash barrier which will have a less impact on the occupants obviously it will deform more so there are other examples on the other hand um, of this excuse me it would increase uh, increased deflection may be uh, discomfortable so in a in a vehicle where there is a excessively compliant shock absorber the soft ride can result in discomfort actually uh, compared to a hard ride having a stiff uh, shock absorber or for a similar example uh, if you sit in a sofa very very soft spring it may feel uncomfortable after a some time compared to a hard hard sofa then there is uh, other reason uh, or the third important factor for stiffness is failure in uh, by instability so this property actually applies to uh, thin or slender members where the aspect ratio of cross section is very high means the cross section is very small compared to the length what happens is uh, the simple theory of stress uh, considers uh, that deformation is under control it is not very high to invalidate the analysis uh, like the simple beam theory assumes that plane uh, sections remains plane so in situations of slender member under load it may happen that uh, due to twisting or buckling it may lead to failure at loads much lower than predicted by the simple beam theory or simple uh, stress theories so we should also take care of these kind of parameters so what you see uh, there can be a local buckling also or there can be overall deformation also or failure due to that which is much lower than predicted by the simple beam theory going forward so now as we have some idea regarding the importance of stiffness let's understand how to control it so till now what we have seen stiffness is a material property however in structure stiffness can also be controlled by the shape of the structure so let us consider a deflection or cantilever beam out of the two materials we have seen few slides earlier so obviously the material a is stiffer and it has a lesser deflection compared to material b so in a uh, in the condition where we have we have the same parameters of load length and cross section so for a requirement let's say we we cannot use a stiffer material we have to use a uh, low stiffness or low young's modulus material like aluminum which has a, a one third of stiffness than steel uh, maybe for requirements of what we see of heat dissipation and for corrosion prevention so in that case designers has one more option to change the design properties so what you see uh, for any kind of deflection there are two properties in the bottom one is e young's modulus second one is area moment of inertia which is a property of design so this both of them can be changed independently so in a in a requirement where young's modulus cannot be changed or improved we can change the i so or area moment of inertia what you see the image on the right um all the three sections have same area so similarly have same weight but 
their section properties or area moment of inertia of the third beam the i beam is almost 50 times more than the first beam the square beam and similarly the area moment of inertia of the second beam is almost 17 time more in compared to the first beam obviously in the direction load application direction where the load application direction is vertical so as a designer uh, as a frame designer we exploit this this parameter or this property a lot to design frame structures going forward now with the understanding of its importance and how to control uh, stiffness let us see how stiffness impacts or stiffness uh, impact the frame design so uh, as you have seen in the previous slides stiffness plays a key role in an assembly where there is relative motions or between the adjacent parts similarly stiffness of overall motorcycle is the combination of uh, its key structural parts such as suspension shing arm wheels frame and even tires so stiffness of these parts combinedly plays a key role in defining the dynamic behavior and maneuverability of the vehicles and and control those uh, handling as to six what we saw on two slides before in the v when bobble so high structural stiffness of motorcycle ensures precision in trajectory and also it provides a quick response to the driver input so when i say uh, driver input let's consider a load case of acceleration so the right bottom image is that uh, driver driver input load case it is a load case of acceleration so there are three forces one is uh, vertical reaction or the raw or the reaction due to the load itself then there is a load in the chain direction so what you see this is a this is a pictorial image of chain then this is swing arm this is the sprocket at the engine end and this is the sprocket at the wheel end so when we give throttle so there is a uh, force in the chain top chain there is a pull in the top chain and there is a uh, reaction at the road where the tire contact patch is there where where there is a traction load so all these forces what they try to do they try to deform the swing arm consider uh, if the swing arm's rigidity is not there it might deform so in that case if the swing arm is not rigid enough the suspension will not function correctly so and there won't be proper uh, traction on the wheel so obviously for this kind of uh, uh, load transfer react Uh, requirements rigidity of parts plays a important role so for uh, what you see in the top image like acceleration there is load in the uh, during braking also in case of a panic braking uh, there is a huge amount of load which transfers through the front uh, tire contact patch to the suspension to the frame so uh, frame stiffness plays a very important role in that reason and simulation have shown that torsional stiffness of frame near steering head plays a stable uh, important role in high speed wobble it, it it helps to stabilize the vehicle similarly the lateral stiffness of the suspension also helps to stabilize the wobble phenomena then the rear frame also helps to uh, in weave mode of the vehicle this is so now let's go to the next um, specification design specification what is being used for uh, frame design or to achieve the customer requirements is the strength and durability so as we have discussed earlier strength is the ability to resist load so based on the uh, use cases so there are three forms of strength static strength which is the ability to resist steady load at room temperature static strength is the ability to uh, resist fluctuating or time bound rate uh, load where the load actually changes uh, time to time or a cyclic load uh, mostly in case of a suspension mount uh, where suspension goes through the road undulation there is be a cyclic load in that reason then creep strength is the ability to resist load at elevated temperatures uh, when applied for a over extended period of time uh, 
mostly in the region of uh, engine engine mountings where there is a ambient temperature due to the engine temperatures same applies for motor where there is a temperature in evs so a clear understanding of strength behavior of material generally requires the determination of stress strain curve either in tension compression or shear what you see uh, in this image is a stress strain curve of a mild steel so from that uh, stress strain curve we actually takes three parameters so parameters of strength yield strength ultimate tensile strength and break strength um, mostly as we have know as we know yield strength is the point at which material starts to deform plastically and ultimate tensile strength is the ultimate or the maximum strength that a metal can take uh, before failure and break strength uh, for corresponds to the strength at uh, at the point of breakage in the stress strain curve there are few other parameters like uh, limit of proportionality elastic limit there are upper and lower limit of yield strength but mostly in design uh, in frame uh, structure we consider the yield limit and in in uh, design where crash structure is involved where uh, energy has to be absorbed both ultimate strength and fracture uh, limit of the strength also being considered so uh, there is uh, something to um, uh, strength which is related to manufacturability also so uh, manufacturing history of the metal also defines how much strength is there in the final component uh, for an example uh, casting is have more strength in compression than tension then similarly there are directionality to the properties also so sheet metal uh would be stronger in the grain direction along the grain direction so what you see the uh, top right image when sheet metal is formed through cold or hot rolling uh, it along it creates grains along the feed direction and when we take that sheet metal if you see the center image so these lines actually represents the grain directions so we should make sure that the bending bend line is perpendicular to the uh, grain directions so this ensures that all the grains are loaded uh, equally otherwise what happens is if you see in the last image uh, if the bend line and grain lines are par parallel it actually try to separate the grains there is something called dislocations uh, which i am not explaining here but it it will accumulate the dislocations and it will fail very easily so one example is if it, uh, in this image where if the bend line is parallel to the grain it will uh, most probably it cracks mostly it starts from the edges also in some of the cases there is other phenomena uh, during manufacturing uh, which is called strain hardening through which also we can improve the strength of the uh, final product mostly um, both hot and cold work cold working mostly in the cold working when cold working is the final stage we also should keep in mind that uh, the attempts to increase the strength actually reduces the formability machinability uh, wear resistance ductility so let's say through strain hardening i'm trying to increase the strength so um, the material is plastically deformed but actually the overall ductility will further reduce so that is one thing we should keep in mind second yeah so apart from the mechanical properties uh, there are and geometrical properties there are two important properties as weight and cost that also needs to be controlled so uh, and that needs to be considered during design so cost is uh, there are many aspects to the cost like raw material cost manufacturing cost manufacturing itself a cost as multiple others uh, sub cost like labor cost tool cost Uh, then assembly cost, uh, then design cost, design cost as per the time, then consultation cost, then cost of redesigning due to failure during testing. Then there is a cost of service which customer also has to pay. So overall, only raw material cost itself counts for around forty to seventy percent of total part cost. So we should take care or we should uh, have processes so that we can reduce cost. so i would like to list out few of the uh, optimization uh, 
uh, or controls how we can uh, reduce costs or take care of cost in design one is part count reduction how part count reduction helps obviously um, with the part count reduction the allied processes like manufacturing process assembly process fixture design process transportation storage inspection and rejection process uh, also scrap is also reduced so part count is uh, one of the process where one of the aspect where we can reduce cost so one way how we can reduce part count is integration of functionalities so how we have seen in the previous examples uh, the fuel tank is now part of the rear frame rear frame itself is a fuel tank so where we integrated functionality of uh, fuel tank into the frame but we also should make sure that in that specific example uh, the fuel as a chemical uh, should not be reactive to the polymer uh, or composite in the frame structure then one more aspect is variation in raw material and fastener user let's say we are uh, using different thickness of raw materials we should try to minimize that as much as possible if you use multiple thickness and then they all need different setups of the tool during manufacturing and uh, different forms of uh, different there is a requirement a minimum requirement of raw material is also there so they all increase the cost then obviously fea also helps uh, through optimization uh, cost reduction then using common uh, combination of parts let's say we use common frame uh, between variants to variants in some of the tvs variants uh, we use to a large extent uh, same front frame so it actually reduces the uh, time to market so it gives a competitive advantage to the oem uh, to the company so that they can they can have a market hold their their product can launch faster then number of joints has a impact on the cost so every joint can be considered as a serviceable point so every joint leads to a failure um, so that also can be minimized then one more aspect is using standardized uh, raw materials so uh, let's say as per uh, our stiffness requirement uh, we have to use a tube size of 25 diameter but most probably it may not be available the standard size of tube is 25.4 so that compromise we have to do uh, in weight so that we can have a uh, reduction of cost going forward uh, the other aspect is uh, weight so founder of lotus car limited uh, mr colin chapman once said so adding power makes you faster on the street while subtracting make you faster everywhere so what he means is by subtracting weight we actually reduces the mass movement of inertia and it it increases the performance and mostly in evs if you subtract weight we might have to use a uh, lower power motor and low capacity battery which in turn further reduces the weight and increases the mileage so weight has a uh, very important impact in design or vehicle performance it it reduce improves improves the fuel economy reduce emissions and increase the performance so in design uh, there are two ways where how we can reduce weight one is obviously reduce the raw material use so then uh, we'll talk about in detail how how it can be done then um, material substitution use a material with low density so obviously there are contradicting scenarios when you use material with low density the chances are there the stiffness is also low so we should find a way how to take care of that contradicting scenario also so going forward there are two tactics or two uh, for these two um, strategies there are multiple ways we can do it uh, i'll touch upon one or two of them um, basically like structural optimization or you would have heard of topology optimization it aims to find the best geometry for a structure for the given load case within the design space so so it find what you see on the right is for the same load case Uh, initially there was a uh, shaft being used circular shaft then there is c section then at the finally uh, a section being used where there is this been there are ribs in the uh, loading direction which helps to minimize the weight altogether the final concept where the weight per meter is only 3 kg while uh, having the same section modulus so there are softer which helps to do op topology optimization also 
then sensitivity analysis is to uh, what we do is find components in the vehicle which has uh, highest impact on the weight but very low impact on the performance um, so we can uh, deduce the section properties and deduce some weight in them then what we do is we find a component where which has a highest impact on the performance and a slight improvement on that then we can neutralize the system and finally we can achieve a weight reduction one one aspect is like uh, one more way how can do weight reduction is multi material uh, design so it suggests right material at light location so what we can do is where uh, where there is a high strength requirement we can use a material which is strength relevant and where the stiffness requirement we can use um, materials with high stiffness such as um, there are aluminiums which matches the steel with strength in some of the requirements so we can use uh, magnesium or aluminium strength specific requirements also so one aspect to remember is uh, sometimes for weight reduction we should uh, not over design or we should not add elements which we have a higher cost implication so what you see in the image these are holes is obviously they they add stiffness also but they they uh, mostly helps in weight reduction but this kind of design might have a larger impact on tooling and costing i'm not saying it is a wrong design but uh, specific to specific on on a bracket design we should take care that uh, what is the implication on cost when we go for weight reduction going forward so here um those were the key parameters what we saw till now what we consider there are some other parameters also which we have to consider um which i have not captured here but mostly we will see how how ev is impacted how frame design is impacted uh, for the future powertrain uh, future drive requirements so one example is uh, let's consider for different vehicle energy system efficiency if you consider so what it says is for driving a distance of 500 km it requires 33 kg of diesel and system weight of around 43 kg which includes fuel tank and all comparatively it would require for the same to achieve uh, same 500 km range uh, 830 kg of uh, cell system where only cell weight will be uh, 540 kg so it puts a lot of load onto the frame obviously the overall size of the vehicle is not increasing so frame has to accommodate all those increasing ev component also uh, in the same time we should uh, optimize the weight reduction for optimum performance and range so there are key challenges in ev for mass production or mass adaptation is range anxiety um, still long distance travel in ev is limited by battery range then battery safety in case of collision and battery cost one example is how how frame can contribute is use frame as a battery casing and reduce the overall cost of the battery battery packaging and and it also helps in reducing the weight overall going forward one of the uh, key design requirement which i have um, i will basically touch upon is dfx design for x means design for manufacturing design for assembly design for serviceability on many things such like that so um, so obviously in design apart from mechanical properties we should take care of design uh, manufacturing service requirement one such example is we should give mounting such a way that it is accessible so that it reduce the service time uh, once in the service stations also uh, there is accessibility for welding we should give uh, we should make design such a way that along with uh, even though it is strong there is be there should be accessibility to weld robots so uh, these parameters should be taken care um, same way in assemblies also a frame design should be such a way that it enables assembly of components easy assemblies um, or fast assembly of components then we should take care of the requirements such as painting uh, for uh, fabricated steel parts painting is a key requirement so we should have provision for drain holes uh, 
we should control the paint thickness also so finally uh, the key requirement is uh, we should understand the drawing also that is the only document which goes to the supply it is like a it is like a language so we should make sure that all design requirements all the parameters which i have just discussed is captured in the drawing and supplier understands that through gdnt through critical characteristics and through critical dimensions we make sure in frame design that all these parameters are captured and the frame is delivered so that uh, the final vehicle meets the all those requirements what parameter we have just discussed i cannot explain to a supplier the only document which goes to them mostly is the drawing going ahead uh, finally i will touch upon the career possibility in structural design so uh, mostly we covered the design so people can start in uh, in the cad or the virtual world then uh, people can uh, in structural design specifically people can be in the part of uh, analysis or validation through fea there are validation for sheet metal forming validation for welding validation analysis tools for mold flow analysis for casting and then people can be part of testing uh, for uh, test instruments instrumentation people also people should have idea where to put load cells for calculating the stress in the frame then uh, people from met metallurgical background also can contribute to frame design where for supply selections um, for identifying uh, key key outputs from the supplier then uh, mostly sometimes people from design background also goes to development where uh, people can uh, are closely related to supplier development and make sure that design parameters are ensured then people work in the supplier end obviously for manufacturing tools welding jigs manufacturing jigs then finally uh, people can be part of education and training for cad cam software training or validation verification software trainings and then for design calculation training gdnt weld calculations are very uh, important there are uh, very good organizations now which focuses specifically on gdnt and specifically on weld calculation people can be part of that also who who likes to teach and part of this kind of uh, work profession so finally uh, i'm going to a recap so i think uh, the session has stretched a bit so i'll i'll close soon uh, mostly we touched upon the frame uses then we seen the product development process we have seen the design parameters of the frame and finally we have touched upon how frame design changes or what is the impact when we go for uh, future ev designs uh, with uh, more and more components and more and more safety requirements coming for the frame design so thank you for your attention and next time when you when you see uh, any bike please try to admire the frame and see how it carries different parts thanks a lot so i'll um, stop sharing now um, or i can be in the ppt itself uh, please ask any questions i'll open the google form Yep. One question is, uh, I think from Asis, he asks, why heavy CC vehicle have only mono shock on rear rather than two round, two found in low CC? Yeah, it's mostly related to suspension design. Um, I can say it is one of the style requirements also. and one more question what he has is why suspension are installed at an angle uh, rather than straight vertical uh, there is something uh, it is mostly related to packaging also and uh, consider um, let's say i'll go to some slide where you can see this actually you consider here maybe um, uh, or here let's say suspension is just below the rider uh, the ideal um, way can be uh, vertical need not to be actually because the wheel travels uh, in a arc actually so 
uh, it need not to be the, the actual compression may not happen in the vertical direction itself so it can be actually perpendicular to the uh, if you can maintain uh, suppose are being perpendicular to the swing arm rotating motion then it that would be a ideal condition but what happens is when you make suspension vertical it actually uh, takes the seat height up so that is one of the key parameter in ergonomics for a vertical suspension the seat will be much more high around 30 40 mm high so that may not be uh, possible to accommodate in the vehicle packaging scenario hope i answered your question so i think we are just about time if if is there any question there is a form actually uh, from where mr ashish has asked this question in the description anybody has any question please ask through that i'll try to answer i'll maybe if possible i try to go to the live to feed also sir hello so i think there is no further question so we will stop here thank you everybody for your attention yeah there is one more question yeah. what are your thoughts regarding uh, parametric theory modeling for frame design also the thought on flexible links yeah the second question um i am not an expert in suspension design so i think it is related to flexible links do you mean on the suspension design if that so i will not be cannot be able to answer one thing happens is in linkage suspension there will be a lot of uh, components which also leads to durability problems um first question is uh, parametric 3d modeling uh, we do uh, parametric do you mean parametric design obviously now all designs are parametric uh, drawing and designs are related um, maybe i don't understand the question properly parametric 3d design or 3d cad design now all designs are that way only so what what i can do is please uh, my email address is also there at the last you can take a note and ask in detail i will try to explain or give some reference for this questions uh for mr kumar murthy murthy actually i could not understand the first question uh, please send me a mail on this i will try to answer on this so we will stop here if, if there is no question Hi Murli then uh, should I stop the call